Hey guys and welcome to today's oil painting tutorial. Since I really enjoyed painting Geisha and Euran inspired works in the past, I decided to use oil paints to create another character within this scene. Because of the extended drying time, it always requires a greater investment to create oil paintings versus working with watercolors. For this reason, I usually like to use watercolors when I'm exploring new conceptual paintings or a series of paintings before investing in using oils. This pre-process helps me tremendously, because it helps me to discern how to paint the various parts of my composition. During this process I can identify what portions of the works are more difficult and therefore require more attention. It would take way longer to move through this learning process using oils. Therefore, for me working with watercolors first is similar to the process of pre-sketching an idea before creating an oil painting. Oftentimes I can transfer characteristics and aspects of the conceptual watercolor work directly into the subsequent oil paintings and vice versa. Of course, since they are very different, the various effects achieved within one medium don't always apply to another medium. Still, since it is a valuable practice for me, I felt it was worth mentioning. Therefore, even if you are mainly a watercolor artist and you are watching this video, I feel this tutorial can still be helpful to you. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to achieve a desirable composition, how to paint detailed patterns and how to paint very small areas realistically. Before I even started this painting though, I spent several hours performing Photoshop work to create a unique composition. During the process of composing this work, I used various photos that I found on the internet and gathered the most desirable parts of them. Then I combined the particularly attractive elements of each and I combined them into a completely new image. For example, the face, hairstyle and body are each a combination of various components from several different photos. I even took pictures of my own hands and incorporated the poses and gestures into the image to create a more interesting composition than featured in the initial photos. I also used various Photoshop filters like Liquify to change some of the proportions of the facial features. Speaking of Photoshop, I'm excited to announce that I will have my first Photoshop tutorial available on my Patreon site starting in February. So if you are interested in learning more about the process of creating a composition in Photoshop, come and support me on my Patreon site at the $5 reward tier to gain access to that and other tutorials. After I composed and painted a series of geisha inspired works, I came to realize that a subtle or single colored background worked best for these characters, since it highlights their utterly opulent costumes. Since my figure was primarily dressed in dark reds, I decided to go with a cold warm contrast and I chose a light blue background with subtle white clouds. I felt this delicate touch in the background allowed the figure to pop, therefore capturing the attention of the viewer. After I finished the pre-work, I really wanted to assure that the image was exactly what I envisioned, since I spent several hours on preparing it. So I simply printed the whole picture and traced the image onto my canvas. In my opinion, there's no best way or place to start an oil painting, because you can always paint over the portions you are not happy with. I personally like to start with the face because I feel that this is the most interesting part of every picture. For the portions of the painting that require very fine and detailed work, I recommend using Michael Harding's oil paint medium instead of Gamsol, because Gamsol tends to dilute your paint instantly, which can potentially damage the already painted details. And as always, materials that I used to create this painting are listed in the video description. In contrast to Gamsol, Michael Harding's oil paint medium is oilier and it doesn't react as strongly to oil paint, which allows you to paint in finer details more easily and without damaging them. For the other parts of the composition, I switched back to Gamsol again, because it cleans my brushes more effectively and helps me to save time. Because it might be difficult for beginners to paint small faces, I'd like to share some helpful tips to navigate the process. First, always keep your brushes clean and choose the brushes in the most effective sizes and shapes that serve to honor the image you are about to paint. For example, 
If you wanted to indicate a lash line, I would recommend using a flat brush instead of a pointed tip brush. This way you can more easily achieve a straight and tidy line instead of a wobbly one. The most important thing I feel is to observe the various components of the painting properly and to avoid rushing the portions of the painting that you find are most complicated. For me it works best to give the nostrils and the shadow under the nose the utmost attention and to complete focus on these parts because they are the areas that tend to be the most difficult for me. Sometimes it can take me half an hour or more before I feel assured that a nose looks decent. It seems to me that the most common mistakes when painting noses is to paint the nostrils too big or too dark, which can instantly turn a beautiful woman into a strange looking mutant. I made this mistake so often and I hope you don't feel frustrated if this happens to you as well. I also feel eyebrows are very difficult to paint and I wanted to offer you a tip for creating them more easily. If you want to create a more realistic eyebrow, smooth the edges and instead of just placing the hairs of the eyebrow onto the bare skin, start by painting an underlayer in a tone that is darker than the actual skin tone, but represents the lightest color of the eyebrow. Smooth out the edges of the painted eyebrow shape and after it's dried, then you can add the individual hairs of the eyebrow to make it look more realistic. I also feel a good face needs more than one layer of paint. Even when using the opaquest white oil paint, it never provides full coverage. So to bring out the lighter parts of a face, I use at least two layers. Now let's move on to the nitty gritty part of this painting, which I felt was the elaborate patterning on her dress. Unlike working with watercolors, if patterns and shapes are intricate, fine and close to each other in a painting, oil paint doesn't allow you to easily place them next to each other. Because everything is wet when using oils, the smaller details quickly smear when I try to paint them in. My solution is to paint details in layers. I began painting the dark stripes of her robe first and then I let them dry before proceeding to add a golden layer on top. This brightened the stripes and made them look as if they were sewn into the fabric. I could have done it the other way around as well, but then the underdrawing of the fabric design wouldn't be as recognizable anymore. I divided every part of my painting into its various components and I invested in pre-planning how to paint them in the easiest and most accurate ways possible. To paint the hair for example, I began with the darkest portions, then I painted in the midtones. Only after that dried did I add the lighter individual hair strands. I let this work dry for a second time and then I added some semi-opaque layers of dark paint on the darkest areas to enhance the contrast. To enhance and clean up the areas that look messy, I used a special technique to complete my painting that involved selectively applying semi-opaque layers with Lequeen Original. This brought clarity to the underlying areas of the painting without losing the details and it also allowed me to add shadow layers and colorful gradients. Another important thing that I incorporated into my work was the element of abstraction. I like to add an extra layer of surrealism by taking away from the realism. When I reach the middle of the painting process, I selectively decide where to add some semi-opaque washes or layers to incorporate a mixture of abstraction and realism. Instead of layering these components of surrealism on top of the painting, I try to contemplate where the washes might look most interesting and to work them into the composition mindfully. I hope you liked this painting and that you found it helpful to learn more about my process. The painting is called Fukai Aiju, which means deep affection in Japanese. I created it for the current art auction at the Bad Apple Artist Collective on Facebook. The auction theme is dedicated to both Valentine's Day and to fairy tales. I decided to go with Valentine's Day because this is an unusual topic for me and I found that creating a beautiful Oiran was a perfect match for this holiday theme. If you are interested in owning this beautiful original image, click the link in the description of this video to learn more about our auctions. 
If you are interested in fine art prints of this image, I have a limited edition of 50 fine art prints available in my online store, both in the basic and the embellished versions. Each print is individually enhanced with glitter and iridescent gold paint, making every print even more beautiful and completely unique. For in-depth painting tutorials, head over to my Patreon page and select the $5 reward here. You will gain instant access to over 40 downloadable painting tutorials, which provide you with insights into my working progress. I also answer your questions and share helpful tips about art materials used. For $10 a month, you get exclusive access to both my live stream and real-time painting videos. For $15 and more, you get beautiful art surprises, fine art prints, original watercolor illustrations and much more.